Welcome everyone to today's webinar, More Conversions in Less Time, How Sumo Logic Built an Effective CRO Strategy from Scratch, featuring Sam Molmud and Guy Alif. During the webinar, please feel free to type any questions you have into the Q&A module at the bottom of your screen. And now without further ado, I turn it over to Guy, CEO of Intellimize. Guy? Thanks, Sesame. Hi, everyone. My name is Guy Alif. I'm co-founder and CEO of Intellimize. For the last several years, I've been putting AI in the hands of marketing and growth teams to help personalize web experiences for each unique visitor in the moment so they can drive more revenue, more customer signups, or more leads to sales. For me, that journey started years ago when I coded a rules-based expert system to design airplanes in college, and I've been a marketer and product guy personalizing digital experiences across industries for the last 15 years while at Twitter, Yahoo, and Brightroll. I've had the privilege of working with Sam and his team at Sumo Logic for the better part of a year. And along the way, we've also become friends. It's my honor to introduce Sam Mulmud. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sam Mulmud, and I'm the Director of Web Strategy and Operations at Sumo Logic. Thanks, Sam. Allow me to set context with 60 seconds on what Intellimize does. Intellimize intelligently optimizes websites. We personalize them for each unique visitor. We do that by working with Sam and others to come up with a bunch of ideas to cajole, cajole prospects to become customers. An example on the left, we have four headlines, four images, and four calls to action that the teams come up with based on intimately understanding their prospects and forming hypotheses on how to turn them into customers. Week by week, we'll help brainstorm ideas together, code those ideas into variations for our customers, and then our machine learning will try every possible combination of those variations. In this example in the middle, the machine learning is optimizing across four times four times four, 64 possible versions of the page. Our system will choose the right combination of variations for each unique visitor in the moment. That means that if Sam and I show up at sumologic.com right now, you might see two different things based on what's predicted to get each of us to start a free trial or any other goals Sam might have for us as visitors. If Sam shows up again a week later, he might again see something different, either because he did something or because the machine learning, which is updating itself every few minutes, got better at predicting human behavior. Using this machine learning approach, our customers are able to massively accelerate their optimization and drive great results, which is exactly what Sam's gonna walk us through right now. Thanks, Guy. Appreciate that context about Intellimize. Let me talk a little bit about Sumo Logic first before we go into the, the main heart of this conversation about CRO and why we're here today to talk about building a strategy from scratch. So Sumo Logic is the company that I work for. We're based out of the Bay Area. And Sumo Logic is a cloud native log management and security analytics platform that enables organizations around the world to monitor, secure, and optimize their applications. I work for Sumo Logic as the director of web strategy and operations. And Web strategy and operations at Sumo Logic, you know, many organizations that can mean quite a few different things within the umbrella of digital marketing. And at Sumo Logic, the team that I'm on is responsible for three things in particular. Our web operations, so that's the design, management, and maintenance of our corporate website property. It's also organic search acquisition, so how we expand through technical and content means our organic search users coming through the website. And then the third area, which is the main heart of what we're here to talk about today, is conversion rate optimization. And when I joined Sumo Logic, we didn't really have too much of a CRO program in place originally. We had done some very A-B testing, introducing new variants, some redesigns prior, and then introduced these and engaged through some analytical research, you know, which one was performing better. Um, but when I joined Sumo Logic, the main uh, mantra that I was given when I joined was to put in a, a robust CRO strategy from scratch, basically build up a framework, put together a roadmap, find out where the opportunities for enhancing and optimizing the website would be, and basically to establish benchmarks to grow those. CRO really at the end of the day, for all intents and purposes, what we want to do at Sumo Logic is really fundamentally, you know, how you take your conversion metrics that matter. For Sumo, it's a lot of free trials, and potentially how you could turn 100 free trials into 130 by identifying those opportunities and those levers, experimenting, getting scientific, and throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks ultimately. In order to kind of set the stage for what the CRO strategy was and some of the awesome experiments that we ran, some of the ones that performed really well, it'll be helpful for me to walk you all through 
kind of what it was like before when I first joined again, doing some barrier A-B testing and even bringing some of the playbooks that I'd had from previous organizations. Now in previous roles before Sumo Logic, I worked with a lot of other A-B testing platforms, even personalization and user journey tools. And so I have quite a bit of experience in playing around with a plethora of SaaS products that marketers would use for A-B testing and trying to experiment on their websites. And I've, I've had some great success with them. I've also found that there are some bottlenecks as well, um, fundamentally with resources. For me, what I've noticed over time, especially when you're in the startup world, um, particularly in B2B and SaaS companies, we often run into the issue though that in establishing these tests and trying to gauge winners and hitting statistical significance, which is really important if you want to establish a benchmark to be able to actually implement these changes permanently, you sometimes have to let these tests run for a very long time. And you have to let them run in silos independently so that they're not being permeated by other um, tests that are going on across the websites. That allows you to be able to analyze exactly how things are performing and be able to declare winners. And with traditional A-B testing methods, it's kind of hard to have different experiences intersect with one another. And it also impedes your ability to actually test a multitude of things. We all know, especially in the startup world, particularly in B2B and SaaS companies, we're having to move extremely fast all the time. We have to pivot. We have to move fast and test fast. And we also have to fail fast as well. So we can also pivot at that point. And these results needed to come quicker sometimes than the ability to hit a 99% statistical significance from your test when you're running it. In addition to that, analytical resources and being able to see exactly what these tests are doing to the bottom line, conversion metrics, engagement, and even down funnel is really paramount to being able to understand if what you're A-B testing and experimenting with on a website is actually impacting these things or not. And it's often found that, you know, by not having truly robust analytics within one platform, you're having to look within your MarTech stack, either in your automation, or go to your CRM, even go to Google Analytics and aggregate this information separately. Whereas having it you know, in one platform where you can really be able to analyze it all together or building that set out, sometimes in itself is a lift to have to do an addition to your A-B testing. All of this really just accumulates into the fact that it's exhausting. It takes a lot of resources. There's a hundred things we can be doing and only three things we can do really well and need to pick out. And so the ability to scale up and have your actual tool will be able to automate some of this stuff for you is actually really something that, uh, that was really interesting to us when we actually met with Intellimize originally and we're comparing it against some of the vendors that I'd used in previous roles. Sam, thank you for setting context on where things were. You're going to talk in a moment about where things are now. We got a question through chat from Shantanu and I invite everyone, Shantanu and others, to add questions through the Q&A uh, and we'll answer them as we go through. Question, does Intellimize work well with WordPress B2C websites as well? It does. Uh, we're relatively agnostic to what happens on the back end, and we have customers across industries, including e-commerce, financial services, and other B2Cs. And we're excited today to go deep on what we've done in B2B together with Sam, showing some of the thought leadership he's driving at Sumo Logic. Awesome. Thanks for that, Guy. So now that we've established the challenges that I've had with traditional A-B testing tools and some of the roadblocks that I've encountered. We're getting to the point now where I'm at Sumo Logic. I'm setting up a new, basically a whole new strategy with for CRO and trying to bring in the tools in order to make this happen. So for me, in order to build a CRO strategy and, and institute some playbooks that have worked at other organizations, first and foremost, you need the ability to actually execute on A-B testing. So this is where Intellimize ultimately came in and where we decided to go with them as opposed to other A-B testing vendors. Having that ability to automate quite a few of our tests, be able to run experiments that can actually permutate with one another within different experiences. And as you can see on the image on the right, you know, taking our homepage of the Sumo Logic site, for example, being able to isolate all these different variables and have these different combinations of the experiences actually fly all at the same time was a huge win for us, especially in the, the growth stage that we are and all the initiatives that we have across the organization. In addition to that, there are some things on a website in terms of the user journey that are working well at all times for any website, and there are things that are not working. It's really important with CRO to understand where your biggest opportunities are and some of the things that you potentially should leave alone and also leave in place so that you're not causing additional friction. This does require knowing your website and requires knowing your audience, and it requires doing some analytical deep diving so you understand where users convert. Are they, for the most part, high-intent users who are hitting the homepage? 
and signing up for a demo or contacting or getting a free trial off the bat? Or are most of your users coming in through organically through blogs and maybe some other solution pages or some thought leadership and are more top of the funnel in nature? Understanding where these users come in ultimately and how they convert and what their behavior will allow you to actually come up with different ideas that'll allow you to basically pick at those opportunities and try to expand them even more. I also analyzed our internal resources within the Sumo Logic marketing team. And this is gonna be different in every single team you're at. Do you have design resources that will be able to fuel the pipeline to, of your ideas that you wanna code out? And then speaking of coding, do you actually have development resources that'll be able to actually breathe life into these ultimately? Another reason we went with Intellimize is because as a vendor that supplies the platform that we can use the A-B testing and personalization for, they actually have the development resources as well. So we were able to utilize that without actually adding additional bandwidth to our internal web team. Huge need, especially when we're running on a sprint level on a weekly basis and doing a lot of new maintenance and a lot of new features on the website with our own internal team. And then as well, just having a general idea of what your integrated marketing initiatives are for the rest of the year. Do you have new product launches? Are you going to have customer events, upcoming webinars? Is there, are there certain teams that rely on certain promotional real estate on the homepage existing and that that's going to be taxed at certain parts of the year because you have these important events or initiatives coming through the pipe? Knowing what you have internally can allow you to actually leverage those within your CRO strategy and actually turn those into A-B tests through your promotions and the language used across the site. And that actually allows you to really build a roadmap to what we eventually were able to scale out at Sumo over the last nine months with Intellimize to basically going from no CRO to full on weekly testing in a, in a sprint environment. We were able to get to the point where we basically had a bucket of ideation to fuel our testing pipeline. And to ideation sometimes is a, is a very hard part. It comes from that opportunity awareness and analysis and understanding basically where are the levers on the website? What are the users converting on? And what are some ideas that can actually fuel what we wanna update? Is it gonna be text? Is it gonna be changing out some of these promotions? Is it gonna be actually introducing completely new design variations? Um, to sections of the site that maybe haven't been touched in quite a while. In order to fuel that ideation though, my secret sauce, and I'm gonna share this with all of you just in the nature of collegiate marketing, is I strongly believe in UX research to empower all of your hypotheses and, and really high scale, heavy hitting initiatives. Now, I always liken marketers personally to mechanics. I mean, at the very end of the day, we are mechanics. And stay with me on this analogy because when you take your car, you know, you go, the best mechanics, you know, you can take a 1999 Toyota Corolla too. They'll hear, you know, something firing in the wrong way or see a specific light and they're like, ah, I know what that problem is. And if they don't know what the problem is, they know exactly actually how to diagnose it pretty quickly because they've been there and done that. Marketers are very similarly. We get better in our mechanics. The more situations we're exposed to, the more models and makes of cars and weird problems we see. So in general, we should have these tools and tricks in the back of our pocket that we can generally pull out and say, ah, conversions are down in this one section of the website. I know how to go diagnose that and find this out, or people aren't converting as they used to in this section. Here's what I'm going to test on this. That's all great. And we should have that in our back pocket to utilize. But ultimately, UX research and understanding what the personas and the prospective users who are coming to your site want, what they're looking for, why they may be coming to the site, and actually their most critical opinions of your organization or the experience they have, which is, can usually be done through UX panel research, audience testing, even sometimes bringing in you know, external resources or even utilizing your internal UX research team to conduct these tests. That can fuel your testing pipeline more than your own mind will ever be able to fathom and come up with all these different ideas. And I'm a really big believer in instituting, especially with overhauls and redesigns of sections of websites, bringing in that UX research is kind of like the hamburger to start with that. And then that kind of determines what you're going to be testing and the new designs and the ideas you're going to have, which then allows you to actually roadmap these out and actually allocate bandwidth to it. And for us at Sumo, especially, you know, within the web team, you know, we only have a finite amount of people. We have external resources. We have Intellimize that can act as our, as our development house for, you know, what we're doing here within A-B testing. We all wanted to stack these things up at the same time so we can actually get homepage testing going at the same time as we're doing signup page testing. As the same point, we're doing pricing page overhauls and digging into our solution pages and updating our navigation, perhaps. Rather than picking one of these at the same time and going through the whole process and then moving on to the next thing, we're actually stacking in a Gantt style format, all these different initiatives at the same time. So certain things might be in design while we're actually doing UX research panels on another, while Intellimize is actually coding and developing some of these experiences to go live. And by really taking the time to plan and update that planning on a weekly basis, not only does it actually keep you organized 
and keep the team aware of how to manage their time with internal requests and also pushing these new initiatives forward. It actually keeps a, an air of transparency with the rest of your organization. They all know kind of where you're pushing the needle and what your benchmarks for success are. Overall, this intersection of the strategy did allow us within nine months to basically get to the point that we had about 250 plus variations running within Telemise and about a billion page versions, which in my career and 12 years in web strategy and the last five or so um, leading web strategy and digital marketing for B2B and SaaS companies, that is the most I've ever been able to do in my career. I've never been able to get that many going at the same time and it's yielded quite some interesting results, which I want to go into and show you guys next. So this is the state of Sumo now with our website experience. Over the last nine months, I strongly argue that we basically moved away from being a static website into actually being a shape-shifting website in all the ways you can imagine. You enter the homepage, something that I just showed you guys a little bit earlier. You're the front doorstep of the website. You're given this experience. We've basically highlighted all these different elements that we could test from promotions above the navigation to the messaging that we utilize in the hero banner to the actual imagery that's there and even the call to action that we display for users to come through. We've identified all these different elements and created experience targets that we want to then serve up with different variations. From there, a user who lands on the homepage could potentially see one of many different experiences. They could see something that is more log management or general platform centric about our operations, or they could see an experience that's more geared to security messaging. And we can do this by actually personalizing the content to users based on some of the integrated campaigns we're doing through some of our integrations in Sixth Sense or UTMing um, folks who are coming into the site. Or we do it based on intent. If some users have actually hit another page, we can actually amend what they see and potentially serve it up to them based on if they visited a URL that has security within it. So we basically turn the homepage at that level into being able to serve up different experiences with potentially different call to actions to match the intent and the user journey that some of those different personas will be coming into. But we don't just end there. Optimizing actually the steps next beyond that point. User comes to the homepage, they'd like to get a free trial or convert on the action that matters most to us. Well, what happens next at that point? Well, being able to dynamically change what they actually see at that point and serve up different experiences and test those as well and gather data. The beauty of Intellimize is that we've actually learned through being able to serve up this multivariate experiences where we actually have pop-ups or we send them to different landing pages is that some users actually prefer different modes of conversion in some experiences and some users prefer other ones. In fact, sometimes they actually prefer the control that you're testing against. Being able to actually test all those at the same time and find out which segments prefer some of these experiences continues to allow you to actually understand what your users would like and to fine tune and craft experiences around them. So I'd like to spend some time to actually walk you through some case study examples of some of the variations in the test that we've run, the method, the hypothesis that we put into testing it, why it was successful, and kind of dig in from there on these. And we have about six ideas that we'd like to walk through and work through with you guys today. And we're gonna start off with a pretty heavy hitting one, which is this pop-up in our navigation. This has an interesting story to it. So free trials, again, going back to the original metric, free trials are what we're pushing quite heavily across Sumo Logic, across the website. You go to this website today and you'll see quite a few call to actions across that are pointing users to start their free trial. And most of the forms and most of the ways of engagement usually follow the same format. So how we serve that up is free game for us to play around with. Before we started testing this pop-up nav, back in the day, if you went to the Sumo Logic website and you looked at our navigation, we have a big button up there that says start free trial and it follows you around the rest of the website. Usually when you click on that, it takes you to our signup page where you can start a free trial. It showcases some general brand information about the Sumo Logic company, some customers who use our product that are happy with it, and a couple of value props that we have. We did have a hypothesis from there, though, that what if rather than actually sending somebody to their landing page to actually convert, what if we brought the landing page to them? The hypothesis that started this whole entire experiment was that reducing friction in the user experience is always a win generally. Most users who come in and convert on, your, on most brands' websites, in my experience, and this is particularly a tried to say within B2B marketing, are going to be high intent users anyway. They wake up in the morning and they're saying, ah, I'm going to Sumo Logic because I need to get a free trial, or I'd like to explore a solution like this. Or potentially they even talk to somebody on their team about saying, ah, you should go explore a couple of competitors and go look at Sumo Logic and sign up for their free trial and play around in the sign box and see what's, see what's going on there. So these users are coming into the homepage and are ready to convert right away. They're yours to lose. You lose them by having too much friction in place. 
So one low hanging fruit in my an analysis of the Sumo Logic web journey was let's reduce that friction and let's just bring the landing page directly to them. And let's par down some of that content and some of the experience to make it easier and more linear for them to convert at this point. Now, some people might say, well, if this has the exact same content as your landing page, why would that necessarily convert better? Some of these tests though are psychological in nature. Sometimes by sending somebody to a completely different page that changes their overall page look and changes that experience. Psychologically, if they're not ready to convert, they have to press the back button. They have to then remember where they were in the web journey to continue through. It is creating more friction actually more than you would actually think. Whereas by having a pop-up that comes up with a little nice X on there, the person could be at any point on their page, consuming information, reading your homepage on your solution page, any of your content could trigger that pop-up and it's less invasive. It's saying, oh, not really interested to convert, but I know where that is. I'm gonna X out of this. So we originally launched this as an experiment actually in the homepage hero banner before we did it in the nav. We swapped out our buttons in the homepage hero. We put an email field with a button there and we noticed that we got immediate lift within the first week on that. Have a hunch that it's working. From there, we then identified all the places on the website that we have a free trial button and which drive the most conversions on the site. Obviously, the navigation being that that follows you around everywhere on the site that produces quite a few free trial conversions. And so we said, let's make this pop-up triggerable within the actual navigation too. So we went ahead and coded a global component so we could trigger the pop-up anywhere we want across the site. And we implemented it on the nav pop-up. And within the first few days going to a week that we launched it, it was immediately having a substantial lift. And to the point now is that that experiment has actually yielded an 81% lift in the conversion rate by introducing that within the navigation and having the pop-up there. And we're continuing to explore utilizing these pop-ups in different mechanisms, whether on the homepage, whether in the navigation or across the website in experiences and even starting to lean into that experience more by fine tuning what that pop-up actually looks like and who it gets served up to to continue to improve that conversion rate. The next example that I wanna walk you through is not necessarily actually conversion rate specific, um, though there is a conversion rate measurement associated with it in this lift, which is kind of the cherry on top of this experience. But the ultimate objective that we were wanting to get to here, and let me make sure actually that... Let me double check, sorry, one... A uh, person just said, hey, I can't see anything. It's a black screen. Can please, can folks please chat? Can you see the screen okay? Just chat, yes, yes. Okay, great. So Peter, I'm sorry, you, you might need to go check some of your settings. Sam, please keep going. Excellent. So this example that I wanted to showcase to everybody about um, our navigation, this wasn't this test wasn't exactly conversion rate specific in terms of free trials or demos or conversions, but it was more of a learning exercise. And I think this is really important to showcase that CRO isn't necessarily about getting as many free trials and demos as you possibly can, although that's wonderful and we always want to shoot for that, especially in high growth companies. But sometimes it's also about learning user behavior and what your uh, users are actually doing across the website. In this example, what we did is we actually had a hunch based on some UX research that we were doing. Let me go back to my screen. I think I just got a note that we were one slide behind. Let me trigger the slide one more time. Bear with me, folks, as I bring that back up. It sounds like we got behind on one slide. All right. All right, we were on the nav restructure slide. Perfect. Everybody can see that it looks like. All right. So this particular experiment that we ran with the navigation restructure, we had a hunch based on some of our UX research that the way that our navigation was organized by having certain links in our solution and platform section weren't exactly giving users the best way to navigate around our site. 
this feedback that we got through some of our UX research prompted us to actually start engaging with our product marketing team and find out if there were ways which we could restart rebucketing the links that are underneath our solution platform sections to improve engagement rates. So how many times a user is actually able to click some of these call to actions and links within the actual navigation dropdowns. We went ahead and basically utilizing the UX research, came up with some new rebucketing mechanisms to reorder the way that the links are presented underneath the solution and platform sections. And we had Intellimize basically code up this variation. Now, the cool thing about Intellimize is that you can actually set optimization goals to tell the machine how to optimize the campaigns. If it's important for you to get more free trials, you make that the goal. And then Intellimize, the machine will actually try to optimize the variations to get you to that uh, lift, particularly for that objective. In this particular case, we told the machine, optimize it for how many clicks you can actually get on the links underneath the navigation. And instead of optimizing for free trials and demos, we made that what is called a tracking goal. So we were able to analyze if we were having an impact on free trials and demos as part of the subsequent experience, but at the same time, be able to measure and optimize for actual clicks and engagement. And what we found is that we actually got a substantially amount, a higher amount of clicks going on to the solution page uh, within the new rebucketing that we did. In fact, it was such a lift in terms of it that it was such a no brainer for the users were going to all these other pages much more than the old variation. And it just so happened that it actually also increased our conversion rate on free trials too by 11%. This is an example of when you're introducing new elements and new experiences within your website, that it's always important if you have the ability to test them out, to test them out first before marching forward and implementing permanent changes. Intellimize in this example allowed us to validate first that rebucketing the navigation, pretty much the spine of our website, wouldn't impede the user experience, but that it actually did increase engagement. And it allowed us just to track and make sure that it wasn't um, stopping or impeding anybody's ability to actually do the conversions that matter most for us at the end of the day. And we were able to learn quite a bit from there. We're proceeding forward actually with more UX research to continue iterating the navigation. In fact, if you go to the Sumo Logic website, you might be getting different versions of these navigations as you experience the website today. For the next example, I want to talk you through, and this is a little bit, this was teased a little bit earlier. We experimented with that navigation CTA for start free trial and basically opened up the ability for a user to get the pop up. Or if they go to our landing page, we started playing around with where do we actually send this fo these folks to. This idea originally came from some PPC landing page experiments we did where we wanted to play around with the idea of dropping the user instead of having a pop up or sending them to a, a free trial landing page actually sending them to the Sumo Logic product itself and basically making it look like it is super easy just to set up an account, giving them a little view of the Sumo Logic dashboard behind them and basically presenting an easy way for them to just start their account and drop right in. Funny enough, the experiment that we originally ran on our PPC landing pages, it didn't produce much lift. So we ended up putting it on the bookshelf. But I took this idea from the rest of the team and ended up implementing it on the main website within the navigation to test and see if we could get lift there. Interestingly enough, we launched this test on the navigation and that too did not work. We actually noticed that it was decreasing in terms of conversions. Rather than saying, eh, let's turn it off and let's not go in it anymore. The Intellimize team and I actually dove into the segments and the analytics further. Just to understand, you know, if this wasn't performing the control, was there something else to this before we completely walk away? And there was. It turns out that all the segments, direct, referral, social, all the other traffic that was coming through, yes, they did not prefer this experience. However, users who came in through organic search were actually converting at a much higher rate than the control experience was when they were given this experience. So a light bulb went off at that point. Let's not can the experiment, even though overall the top level is showing a decrease in the conversions, we found that there is one segment of folks who are actually enjoying this experience. And so we fine tuned the experience to actually only be served up to organic search users. By trimming that off and serving it up to the users who it should be and allowing the machine then to test within that segment, we got close to a 40% lift in the conversion rates of free trials by serving up this experience to organic search users. So it's an example of sometimes if you see that a, a campaign or if you see that a test isn't exactly working too well, this is where that analytical deep dive comes in handy. Sometimes there are segments that it actually is working properly through. And, really thankful that the Intellimize platform actually gives us the ability within a unified platform to be able to analyze some of these segments. Otherwise, we potentially might have thrown away a winning variant and not have ever even known it.
Sam, it's a great example, and I know you've got more coming. I wanted to answer one question from the audience from Jason McKinnis. Does Intellimize integrate with Webflow? The answer is yes, we do. Uh, we are operating client side, and so are relatively indifferent to what's happening server side, uh, and and can go then help modify the experience, just as Sam's describing. Sam, floor is back to you. Awesome guy. The fourth example I wanted to walk you through is a, actually a pretty traditional A-B testing example, um, which it just involves our customer testimonial on the homepage. We had a new component, and this was funny enough, one of the very first tests that we actually launched with Intellimize. I think we were up and running within the first week with this script um, on the Sumo Logic website. Again, much faster than implementing other A-B testing software. And within the first couple of weeks, we had already handed off the wireframe and the designs within Zeppelin to the Intellimize team to basically swap out what we have on the homepage, which is basically four columns and a lot of text showcasing customer testimonials. And we wanted to swap it out with something a little bit more visually engaging, a slider, as you can see here. We launched that and we noticed that that actually had a lift on the conversion rate, a pretty marginal one, but still an improvement. And working with the Intellimize team, we decided we'd lean into this a little bit more. If users were actually getting more free trials by just seeing a different design of our testimonial slider, that must mean that they're pretty high intent anyway. What if we just actually give them the button then to actually convert right there in the place instead of having to make them go to the navigation or go find out where the free trial button is from there, they were already gonna convert anyway. So we introduced a button within this module, leaning into that success a little bit more and it boosted the conversion rate 26% by introducing that there. So this is, I would argue this is an example of finding something that works well and then testing into it a little bit further. If the users are converting through something that's just a design update, chances are there's more friction to be removed. And in this case, we just brought the CTA directly down to them. This is an example of one of our landing pages that you would get on paid search. So if you Google Sumo Logic and some of our keywords uh, for some of our solutions, you'll get some of these landing pages that are independent of our main corporate websites. We also run these through Intellimize as well though. And we uniformly test routinely the imagery, the sizing of the font, the colors, of the CTA and what goes into this above the fold experience when you come here. Across the board, again, and I would argue this is very traditional A-B testing, sometimes it's the small things that really make a difference in just testing colors. Sumo Logic does have a brand palette and we like to keep everything pretty uniform. And most of our call to action buttons are usually our Sumo Logic blue, which across our templates for consistency is pretty much the same. We did introduce though the ability to change out the CTA buttons, whether in the hero banner pop-up or even in the different buttons down the actual page. And what we actually found was, funny enough, by introducing like our magenta and other variations of our blue and even this green, the green variation of it actually bumped everything up by 33% in terms of the conversions on this particular page. It's a testament to that sometimes, yes, those small changes, whether they're imagery or whether they're a button, can make a big difference and they should always be actively and avidly tested and lean into on these examples. And thankfully within in Intellimize, we can actually branch out and large scale distribute these changes to all of our PPC landing pages so that we can push all of this lift across the PPC landing pages in general without having to do it individually one at a time on these different pages. This is a really awesome example that I wanna walk you guys through. Actually, this is one of my favorite projects that I worked on at, the, at Sumo Logic since I joined and it's our pricing page. Pricing page itself as a lever and as an opportunity to improve um, for us was a low hanging fruit. In fact, it was a watermelon on the ground. Um, a, I would say you know, a large percentage of our users, um, probably maybe a third of them, usually visit the pricing page at one point during their experience. And that's arguably the same for most B2B SaaS organizations that have a pricing page. It's cornerstone at every company I've worked at um, to the users. In fact, if you actually map out your user journey and you can do this within Google Analytics and look at your goals, if you're having those mapped out, free trials, demos, or contacts, and you wanna find out how many people visit certain pages, you can set up these segments as well too. We found that this page was cornerstone to users who end up actually converting. Not necessarily that they always convert on the pricing page, but that the pricing page is part of that experience from first touch on the Sumo Logic website to conversion. And so we decided to actually do some UX research on this. We actually brought on an agency and recruited a bunch of users who had not heard of Sumo Logic. And we basically created a panel with some pretty specific questions to understand does our pricing model make sense? Does Sumo Logic seem competitive in the field? And by the end of reading this, do you seem to understand what Sumo Logic offers in terms of these packages? And do you feel like potentially playing around in a sandbox? By being really prescriptive about that UX research, it yielded us about 40 pages of synthesized notes. 
and holes that we could basically fill from this pricing page experience. And along the same time in that two months we were doing that US UX research through Intellimize, we were actually coding up completely different variations on this page of different components, testing color, texting imagery, testing even how the hero banner was displayed and getting some incremental lift there as well too. We married that information on the success of those variations we were testing, the small scale component level ones, with that UX research project we did. And we basically created two completely overhauled new pages of which we use Intellimize to trigger up those variations. And those new variations have bumped the conversion rate of what the pricing page contributes um, to free trials by 81% and rising actually, it's still continuing. This is an always on experiment that we're running within the team, always finding ways to expand and increase the engagement from this page as there's a lot in here and a lot of users are touching this page before they convert. So it really is an opportunity of endless testing and scientific analysis really, but it also is another example of using UX research to empower those decisions you make for even higher impact ultimately. And all of those variations I showed you plus I mean, you saw earlier, we have a billion variations going across the website within those nine months. All of this cumulatively increased uh, our free trial uh, conversion rate by 53%, um, driving this you know, through the pricing page and just all the other experiments that we're driving on the website have really driven such, an increase, such a huge lift uh, to the website overall. And what we found basically in working with Intellimize is that getting it up and running was fast we've been able to utilize their dev resources to be able to fly on regular sprints independent of our own internal web team. And we, we are able to do it within a unified platform, understand the analytics and really be able to see all these inside with actually double checking against our, our MarTech um, analytics and within Google Analytics on a routinely basis to actually make sure it's true, which it is, um, being able to analyze it all there in one stop. So that takes us to uh, to our top takeaways, which really, I mean, you know, touching on touching on all these, you know, as I went through here, it's, you know, the power of Intellimize to do this all within one unified platform to really analyze the lift has has really been a game changer for us. Um, it arguably is an Iron Man suit uh, for us being able to run tests and be able to actually understand what impact these are having across the website. Sam, thank you. That was wonderful. It's great to see these key takeaways. Those examples are practical, actionable. Um, Q&A time. Uh, folks, if you have questions on the strategy, on the tactics, on the specifics, please jump into the Q&A, click on that, let us know. We'd love to answer some of them. Sam, I have one that was teed up in advance. How involved do design and other team members get like copywriting, engineering to create the variations you're testing in order for this approach to work? Pretty active. You know, it really takes a project management mindset to integrate the rest of your marketing team. And it helps, you know, in most of my career for the last 12 years, um, I started off in web management. So you know, content production, building pages for websites. And so working in the sprint environment and working with product marketers, content developers, designers, and bringing those together uh, to work on these experiences is something that's pretty I'm pretty used to in my career. I would say that the design is basically the lifeblood of all the experiences that we push through. Everything basically starts off with design and we can't go to development without the design firsthand. And usually we're pretty prescriptive in terms of these experiences that we're creating there. When it comes to the copy that we're routinely testing across the homepage, pricing, any of these levers and the examples I showed you earlier, we're tightly intertwined with our content team within product marketing, meeting with them on a regular basis. And I'd argue it's not just us going to them, asking them for assistance and tracking the updates. We have CRO templates. And in fact, funny enough, there's a lot of organizations out there. If you do a quick Google search and any of you are looking to get more organized, there's a lot of free templates out there that you can use for CRO planning, where you can basically in a spreadsheet form, keep your control variation of text, what your hypothesis is, what you're trying to get out of it, and basically create like a B, C, D and track it within a spreadsheet model. I use this information to share with our, with our various team members across product marketing and the marketing organization so that we basically can track what ideas have we tested, what's working now, what's live, which ones have we killed and turned off and are not going with anymore. 
And being able to keep that kind of uniform has been really helpful to being able to make sure that the team is actually assisting us with pushing forward on all these initiatives. Sam, great insight. Thank you. Another question from Gabriel. Given that tracking, do you have a sense for how many tests you're launching every week? Yeah, I mean, now that we're, I would say it ebbs and flows. So this month, I mean, we've been on average of launching about one or two a week. There were some piece, there were some times though within October and November, which we were up to launching five a week. Uh, it really just depended on how many variations that we were turning on. We also load up in the pipeline tests that we are gonna test and turn on later down the line. I'm even though in Telemice, as powerful as it is in allowing you to test many different elements or experiences within the page and then load up those different uh, variations within those experiences. I'm still a big believer in decomplexifying and allowing tests to run one to one against each other. And so depending on what your traffic is coming in your site or even on certain pages, StatSig is always really important, making sure that you're allowing the machine to actually be able to properly analyze and understand what the success is of some of these variations. And so sometimes we'll create seven or eight different variations of you know, one element at a time, but I'll only turn on one or two of them to compare against the control. And then I'll let that run its course within a couple of weeks. And then the next week after that, if it's, if it's run its course and I'm ready to throw something else at the control, maybe those two variations didn't actually beat the control, I'll turn those ones off and I'll queue up the others. So we actually have quite a few variations sitting in production that are just waiting to be launched at the fly when we're ready to. Resonates a ton. And yeah, um, some others then do, do, even more of the multivariate lens. So you might be launching two, three, four, five or more a week, but when you multiply it out, you've got many more options to go meet each individual visitor where they are. And you can take the simultaneously, hey, I wanna find winners. As you said, I wanna run the head to head. I want to learn, can I use this message in other marketing because it's a statistically significant winner while simultaneously making more money and driving in this case, more, more demos, excuse me, more trials. Another question from Nicole, were the variations tested device agnostic or specific to desktop? Do the variations need to be device specific? They don't. I would argue that it actually just depends on the nature of the test and what you're looking to get out of it. Uh, on the Sumo Logic website, um, you might be able to notice that we actually have two different navigations, depending if you're on mobile or tablet or desktop. And so sometimes the tests that we're running on the navigation, as an example, are going to be device agnostic. If we're overhauling, say, like testing a mega navigation with pop-ups that appear within the nav and imagery that'll go along with that, that'll just be served up to the desktop because it's only impacting the experience that desktop users would see from getting served that experience. Whereas that example I showed you earlier about rebucketing and organizing those links that you see underneath, that was being deployed across both desktop and mobile and tablet because the information architecture that's being pulled from both those experiences is one and the same. So it really depends, I would say, that on the nature of the test and what we're trying to accomplish there, what medium they're being served that experience through. Generally, we will allow tests to be served up to users on all devices. I argue strongly in a mobile first design met methodology and mentality with any new designs or implementations you're doing on a website, you always wanna make sure that it's, it's good for mobile users to encounter. And sometimes that means that you have to create different variations to target those individuals on those devices as they will be seeing the website in a different light. Right on, thank you. Um, another question, how much visibility do we get into the analytical details of the machine learning or is it a black box? Uh, if you'd like to share and then I'm happy to share more as well. Yeah, absolutely, we, let's, let's both share some insights on that. From, from my standpoint is I would argue the end user standpoint and testing on the Sumo Logic side. Um, I would say it's quite opposite of the black box um, in terms of analytics, in fact, it's the Intel, and I'm speaking specifically about the Intellimize platform analytics that I'm viewing in there. If you're familiar with Google Analytics um, and creating segments in there with deep diving information, it's actually very similar in terms of the terminology and the breakdown as you would see within Google Analytics. When we look at um, campaigns and how we bucket um, overall experiences, we're generally creating shells of whole entire sections of the site that we're testing with another objective. So for instance, we have like a homepage campaign in general. Now on the homepage campaign level, you can see what that overall campaign is producing in terms of lift by the metrics that you would like to look at. If you're looking to see if it's increased free trials or demos, contacts, or even just clicks. If you have that information set up when you set up the campaign, you'll be able to view that at the high level dashboard of that campaign view of the homepage and see what all your tests across the homepage have been doing for that. 
But if you'd like, you can drill down and see, hmm, maybe I just want to look at actually the experience of the homepage and some of my variations within there and understand what the conversion rate is of some of these variations. And Telemai's platform in the back end actually allows you to see um, piece by piece those different variations, what the conversion rate is of the metric that you select. And then at the top, it actually shows you kind of what the control conversion rate is. So real time as you're scrolling down the page, you know, you're able to see, ah, okay, yeah, these variations are, wow, that's, and sometimes they're actually outperforming the overall uh, campaign lift as a whole, because sometimes the variations themselves stand alone stronger. You can actually even drill down into this even more so if you want by filtering and looking at just the organic search traffic, how they're converting the direct. You can even create up custom dimensions and variables as well. Uh, and having the Intel My System ingest users who might have visited a blog page that's of this particular category. We've set up all sorts of cool custom attributes that allow us to filter these experiences and be able to analyze that data. In fact, that's how we found out that the, um, the fake product experience that I showed you guys earlier, that's how we found out that, that was actually converting well among organic users. Sam, you nailed it. Thank you for that context. And our intent is very much what you said, for it to be the opposite of black box, for it to feel like a white box so that you can parse and slice and dice at any level of granularity you want. And as you were saying, you can also take that data into your own in-house analytics, whether that's GA, if we're talking, or some other system. Uh, at the impression level, literally every single unique decision the machine learning made, you can have to then go slice and dice internally either because you want to go check against the existing dashboard Intellimize is offering, or because you want to view some downstream metric, or you've got some sensitive data that can't leave your four walls. So it's very much intended to be a white box. Another question, this one coming from Jeffrey. Jeffrey, forgive me, one of these terms, I don't know. So how are you able to continue to run DOE style UX tests? It's the DOE thing that's new for me. On top of personalized experiences, what level of credibility, DOE equals design of experiments. Thank you. What level of credibility do you normally achieve in your personalization-based experiments? That's a great question. And yeah, the personalization experiments, I would argue are much different than the A-B testing. The personalization that we've done here in serving those different experiences are gonna be served up sometimes to much smaller segments uh, than you would if you were to open up the aperture completely to all the users coming through. For us, in kind of crafting these designs that we're going at the very beginning, we're very prescriptive on what kind of on what problems we're trying to solve by the UX research that's actually empowering some of these designs. And so when we're trying to create these different personalized experiments, say, you know, to target a different persona or somebody who might be interested in one particular solution, we're using the fundamental UX research to empower what the text, what the message, what the positioning would appeal to a user who's coming in through there particularly and what they'd want to see. We're then using that to compare. And again, it helps to have apples to apples in terms of the conversion so that you can measure to see if one is actually outperforming the other. And in general, I would argue there's a trade-off between having just good UX and having a good conversion rate. Not all the time do you wanna have something that's running just for the sake of increasing conversions because sometimes you could actually get conversions but they might not be actually high quality at the end of the day. You might be gaming your, your levers on the website but ultimately what the users are getting will not be connected to actually the intent for which they came through. I would actually argue that that's why having the feedback loop with your SDRs and the people who are taking these demos or taking the free trials and following up with the customers that are coming through is great to actually validate some of these experiences that we're testing with an A-B testing and personalization through Intellimize, because then it actually tells us that some of these experiences that we're developing based on the UX research that's actually supposed to improve the user's experience, if that's actually resonating or not and actually improving that and what they're getting at the end of the day, if that's actually tying to the messaging that we were pushing forward. Resonates a bunch. I'll add a bit more if I may. I know in pretty much everywhere, you know, A-B testing and personalization are two different teams, two different budgets, two different strategies, two different mindsets. In our humble opinion, that distinction is not as helpful because ultimately, their goal is to both drive more money, whether more money is more revenue directly, more leads to sales or more new customers. And so we view what we're doing together with Sam and others as personalization and testing at scale so that you can simultaneously get that winner and make more money by personalizing for each unique visitor and agree with Sam completely on a machine's going to actually choose what to show people among the brand safe options that we as humans have come up with okay, then we better tell it to optimize for the right thing. And that may be some downstream metric like Sam was just describing. You wanna be able to see 
for each individual test? Did I move somebody further through the funnel? And ultimately, did that get somebody, you know, to convert in the way I wanted at the end? So, yeah, go ahead, Sam. Did that trigger something for you? Yeah, guy, that was that totally resonates. And I, you know, this is definitely, I, I would argue, a, a healthy debate among, you know, people's attempts at personalization. You know, ultimately, with an ABM personalization, in my opinion, at the grand scale of, you know, an idealist world, personalization truly is individualized experiences for the right person as they come through. And I think sometimes organizations will sometimes leap forward in personalization before they have the marketing operations or even the web experience or even the analytical know-how of what their users are looking for in order to do it totally properly. It's a really huge initiative and enormous organizations even struggle with that individualized approach to personalization. What for a company of our size, you know, uh, as Sumo Logics and, and from my background and working with similar size companies, smaller and also some much larger as well, the cool part about what we've been able to do with our A-B testing, to a guy's point, is we've been able to do personalization, I'd argue with it, with some insurance attached to it, is doing personalization, but applying it to our A-B testing so that we still basically validate if all the effort that has gone into serving up these personalized experiences actually did produce a lift, is actually improving the user experience. It's really important to know before you actually invest more bandwidth internally for resources for that true individualization kind of personalized approach, because it is a huge bandwidth and knowing whether or not that does increase lift and improve the conversion rate is really good metrics to be able to take back to the team to empower um, your ABM and personalization initiatives at scale across the organization. Sam, for me, that resonates a ton. And in fact, it's one of the things that in our experience in A-B testing, we generally didn't do and should. You run the A-B test, you have A versus B, you pick a winner, you show it to everybody, you're done. But then you change your ad targeting, you change your email copy, you change your creative, you change messaging on the site, your competitor does something, you run a promo and you attract different people to your website. You don't know anymore if that winner is still the winner because the world changed. So having a consistent holdback group, you were talking about it, right? You have control and Intellimize gives us as marketers so much more credibility to go to our CMOs, our CFOs, our CEOs and say, look, I drove real lift for the company. And I found some winners both at the same time. That consistent holdback group, I think, um, adds a lot more credibility, just as you were describing, to the achievements we're bringing and the value we're demonstrating to the organization. Absolutely. Another question. Sam, we've had a lot of trouble utilizing the free version of an A-B testing tool to accelerate experimentation on our dynamic pages. Would you recommend Intellimize out of the gate? Or do you think establishing a baseline, actually, that's interesting. That's like the control group we were just talking about. Standard A-B testing tool is important before using something more powerful. That's a really, really good question. I would say that you're past the building block of creating a CRO strategy, and you're already past the crawl and even walk phase where you're trying to sprint and trying to run um, with your CRO approach. It sounds like you probably already have ideas if you've been A-B testing some things and you're kind of testing the limits of the current technology that you might have in place. I would find out what those limits are from a technological basis. I know in my experience, I've used the free version of Google Optimize before um, in my past, and it's a really powerful out of the box tool, especially you know even some of my personal websites or even some of my consulting um, positions that I've had in the past. You know, Google Optimize is capable of quite a bit of things. At the same time, the ability to interact with other MarTech tools, um, being able to perform lift uh, without impeding your site speed or the ability for it to register for certain users, or even being able to tie those analytics back without having to custom build them, that have, those have sometimes been the bottlenecks I found with some of those free tools. In terms of using Intellimize out of the gate to solve those problems, knowing exactly what the technological hurdles that you've identified with your current free version, it'd be great to be able to circle those and then take it to the Intellimize team and basically say, hey, these are some of the things I can't do with this, or these are some of the areas that are impeding my ability to A-B test. Do you guys have the ability or even some plugins or out of the box capabilities to address these right off the bat, especially if you, uh, if you know that those are holding you back? Sam, thank you for the context uh, to answer the question. The one other thing I'll add is folks often frame the mental model in the way that question was framed, which is this is basic, this is advanced humbly submitted, we think you can use this exactly the same way, right? This will give you all the stuff you're used to getting with A-B testing where you get a winner and 
you'll deliver better results at the same time because ultimately A or B was not the best thing for everyone, right? It, it, there, there's a mix of what to show each visitor. And so you can sort of have your cake with a straightforward A-B test and eat it too by delivering better results. One, two, you get to add and remove ideas anytime you want. Like you don't have to start a whole test over. You don't have to leave the whole world alone while you're running an individual test, right? You have another idea on Monday, two more on Wednesday. You want to remove one on Thursday? No problem uh, at all. And the third is you have to check that you don't have to check the darn thing every day because it's updating itself all the time. It's keeping an eye on changes in your traffic and adjusting accordingly. So I, I would offer that you can uh, take the same approach you're taking today, but get more out of it with a tool like this. Um, we're at time. Uh, I, there was one or two more questions. We can follow up with them afterwards. Sam, I want to thank you. That was tremendous thought leadership, insight on strategy, practical, actionable ideas. Thank you for taking the time to, to, to walk us through that today. Thank you to everybody who joined and for the great questions. Sam, thank you. Thanks for having me, Guy. It was a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great day. Bye-bye.